Some parents are still trying to decide if they should send their children back to school next month or instead opt for in-home virtual learning. One issue influencing that decision is how COVID-19 affects children. We know an 11-year-old here in Shelby County has died from the disease. WMC Action News 5 investigator Jessica Jagloy spoke with several medical experts and a parent to understand the long and short-term consequences of the disease in children and what's still unknown. My husband and I keep going back and forth. Rocio Rodriguez is wrestling with a decision that nearly every parent of school-aged children is facing right now. Should she send her rising fourth grader back to school or keep him at home and have him learn virtually? Realistically, we would like for him to go back um, to um, interact with his teachers, to interact with his, with his um, classmates. But we are very concerned also with the rising numbers. Her son goes to a private school in Shelby County, which has more COVID-19 cases than any other county in Tennessee. And so far, more than 1,600 school-aged children in Shelby County have contracted COVID-19. It's a very challenging decision. Dr. Jennifer Snow is Baptist Hospital's Director of Pediatric Intensive Care. You have to look at the local infection rate. You have to talk to your school, see what measures the schools are using to mitigate the risk of infection social distancing, masking, sanitizing. Fortunately, the data still shows that kids are less severely affected by COVID-19 than adults. Dr. Snow says it's unclear why children's symptoms are less severe. COVID-19 and children. And Dr. Bindi Abaga with Labonder Children's Hospital points out only a small number of children have died from COVID-19. They are not getting super sick with it. There hasn't been that much mortality. We checked with the state health departments in Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas and found in Tennessee, nearly 4,500 youth between ages 0 and 10 have contracted the disease. Three have died. Over 10,000 youth between 11 and 20 years old have been diagnosed with COVID-19, and one has died. The most recent data available in Mississippi shows over 5,200 COVID-19 cases have been in those 17 or younger. Just over 50 have been hospitalized. More than 5,000 youth aged 17 or younger have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in Arkansas. All have survived. It's not affecting children as much as it's affecting adults, right? Not to say that they are totally protected from it. Dr. Baga says the disease presents differently in children than it does adults. But in adults, most of the symptoms are respiratory, so they usually have the cough and uh, shortness of breath. In children, they can have that, but along with fever and some cough, they can also a lot of times just present with GI symptoms, so they can have diarrhea, vomiting. Children may also develop headaches, an altered mental status, and a stiff neck. Another phenomena, says Dr. Baga, is multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Which is one thing that uh, I think families and uh, uh, pediatricians in the community have to be really concerned about. Dr. Baga says the symptoms include rash, red eye, and lymph node swelling, and usually shows up three to four weeks after a child has been exposed to COVID-19. Their body's immune system has kind of gone rogue on them, and they get super inflamed and get really sick and come in, you know, to the hospitals. According to Dr. Baga, Labonner has seen about 10 cases of the disease so far. But even with that, the recovery has been really good. Still, Rodriguez questions what the long-term consequences for her child might be should he contract the disease. Does my child have the potential of suffering from long-term neurological problems or something that could be a lifelong struggle? Dr. Snow says it's unlikely, but unknown. You can extrapolate that if kids are less severely affected, not having severe disease, there re there's reason to believe that there shouldn't be any long-term consequences or sequelae from the virus, even if they get it. Um, but again, it's still too early to tell because it is a new virus. Medical experts say children with certain underlying conditions, like an organ transplant or cancer, should likely not return to school. But there isn't much data about how COVID-19 affects children with asthma or diabetes. In those cases, doctors say it's up to each family to decide what's best for their child. For the investigators, I'm Jessica Jagloys.